Today we're going to dive into something that's shaking up the Linux world, Kaspersky. One of the most recognizable names in cybersecurity has finally brought its antivirus solution to Linux desktop users. This is a major shift in the industry and something that sparked a lot of debate, discussion, excitement, skepticism, and even concern. But before we get into whether you should trust it, let's talk about what exactly is happening here. For years, antivirus software like Kaspersky has focused primarily on Windows and Mac OS. Operating in an ecosystem where threats are prolific and users are used to deploying security tools to protect their machines. Linux, on the other hand, has long been viewed as less vulnerable by many users due to its design, its smaller desktop market share, and its open source nature that theoretically makes it more secure by design. But that perception has been evolving. Spursky has now officially released a home user version of its antivirus product for Linux desktops, expanding its consumer lineup and making its service available across all major operating systems. This includes distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, Linux, Mint, and others, and it comes as part of the overall Kaspersky licensing model that includes standard, plus, and premium tiers, each with a different set of features tied into their broader security ecosystem. On the surface, that sounds like good news for Linux users, especially those who run Linux as their main machine for daily tasks. Creative work, financial work, or anything where they want peace of mind against malware or malicious activity, but as with all major moves in cybersecurity, the question we have to ask is more than can it protect your machine. The deeper question is should you trust it? That includes many layers. Trust in the software's technical effectiveness. Trust in how it handles your data. Trust in the intentions of the company behind the product. Trust in the transparency of its operations. Trust in how it integrates with Linux and the open source community. And trust in whether this is really necessary on a platform that many consider secure by design. Let's start with what Kaspersky's Linux antivirus promises. The company talks about protecting Linux desktops from viruses, encryption, trojans, miners, ransomware, password stealers, phishing threats, malicious websites, and other common vectors that have historically targeted more mainstream operating systems. According to Kaspersky's own descriptions, the product offers real-time scanning, heuristic detection, anti-phishing protections, crypto jacking detection to prevent unauthorized crypto mining, and safeguards to protect banking and personal data. The argument they make is that threats on Linux have increased significantly over the past few years, reportedly many times over, and that, while Linux may be less commonly targeted than Windows, it is far from immune. They also point out specific examples of threats, such as backdoors and widely used open source utilities that could have been devastating if exploited at scale. This underscores the point that threats don't need to be widespread to be consequential on Linux. So technically speaking, having an additional layer of protection isn't inherently a bad thing. In fact, for many users, especially those who dual boot share files with Windows users, run software from unknown sources, or who simply want that extra peace of mind, an antivirus scan can catch things that might otherwise go unnoticed. We know from independent reviews of Kaspersky's antivirus engine for other platforms that it tends to perform very well in malware detection. Catching a high percentage of threats in comparative tests and offering good web protection, phishing site blocking, and additional features that help secure a device. The core scanning engine is well established and respected in many benchmarks. And over the years, it's consistently been rated among the more capable antivirus solutions in terms of threat detection rates. So from a purely functional standpoint, there's reason to believe that Kaspersky's Linux solution could offer quality protection in line with what it does on other systems. But that brings us to the essential part of this conversation, trust. Trust in antivirus software goes beyond scanning efficacy. It goes right into the heart of what data that software collects and how it handles it. It goes into who controls the servers with which that software communicates. It goes into the geopolitical context of the company that builds it. And this is where Kaspersky's history becomes important. Over the past several years, Kaspersky Lab, the Russian cybersecurity firm behind the software, has faced scrutiny and regulatory action from governments around the world due to concerns about its alleged ties to the Russian government. The United States, for example, Kaspersky products were banned on government systems, and the company was prohibited from selling or distributing updates to customers largely over national security concerns. Similar restrictions or discouragements have been echoed by other Western governments. The heart of that concern is this. 
Antivirus software by design has deep access to your system, including scanning files, monitoring activity, and sometimes sending data back to central servers for analysis. That level of access makes trust in the provider critically important. If the provider is seen as having potential obligations to a government or intelligence service with interests that might conflict with user privacy or security, that raises legitimate questions. Kaspersky has worked to address these concerns through initiatives like relocating customer data processing to Switzerland and opening transparency centers where regulators and third parties can review parts of their source code and processes. These are steps toward building trust and accountability. But for some users and institutions, especially in regions with heightened concerns about Russian intelligence influence, those steps may not go far enough or may still not be fully verifying the company's operations in a way that gives them confidence. Another layer of trust involves privacy compliance, such as GDPR in the European Union. Some early reports from tech news outlets indicate that Kaspersky's Linux antivirus is not fully GDPR ready. And that could be a sticking point for privacy conscious users in Europe or regions with strict data protection standards. This prompts questions about how user data is collected, stored, processed, and whether the user has full control and transparency around that flow. Then there's the broader Linux community attitude toward proprietary security tools. Linux users have historically valued open source solutions, not just for reasons of cost, but for transparency and auditability. Open source defenders argue that you can examine the code, understand exactly what it does, and trust that it only does what is visible to everyone. In contrast, Proprietary solutions like Kaspersky's antivirus offering for Linux are closed source, meaning the internal workings aren't publicly auditable. For many in the Linux world, that alone is enough to express skepticism. Some Linux users voice this skepticism openly, suggesting that they would never install proprietary antivirus software on Linux, or that it feels out of place in a world where free open source tools like Clamiv have historically been available. There are also voices in the community who see value in antivirus tools coming to Linux, even if they're proprietary, because they expand the ecosystem. Of security tools available, especially as Linux continues to grow in popularity on desktops and laptops, not just servers, the reality is that the number of threats targeting Linux systems has been rising, and as Linux's user base grows, it will naturally attract more attention from malware authors. Whether you think antivirus is strictly necessary on Linux today is a matter of debate, but the presence of threats suggests there is a place for protective measures beyond the default defenses most distributions provide. What's interesting about Kaspersky's Linux offering is how it fits into the global market context. It's launching at a time when Kaspersky has been pushed out of certain markets and is trying to maintain its presence internationally. Offering a Linux solution broadens their potential user base, and signals confidence in Linux as an important desktop platform. At the same time, some critics argue that this move raises questions about whether it's primarily a business strategy or truly a response to user needs. Critics point to concerns about privacy, geopolitical risk, and the mismatch between typical Linux security models and a Windows-style antivirus product being imposed onto a platform that traditionally doesn't rely on such tools. So should you trust Kaspersky on Linux? There are multiple angles to this answer. If your primary concern is technical protection against malware, phishing, and web-based threats, then there's good evidence that Kaspersky's antivirus engine is competent and offers robust detection capabilities. The core technology has been battle-tested over years of use across millions of machines. It can be a valuable addition for users who want that extra layer of security. If you're in an environment where cross-platform threats are a real concern, or you frequently handle files that interact with other operating systems, having antivirus scanning can reduce the risk of acting as a transmission point for malware. On the other hand, if your primary concern is privacy, data sovereignty, transparency, and avoiding proprietary software on Linux, then Kaspersky's solution might not align with your values or requirements. The fact that it is not fully GDPR compliant at launch the history of governmental bans and national security concerns, and the closed source nature of the software are all reasonable factors to weigh. If those concerns outweigh the potential security benefits for you, then it might make sense to explore alternative solutions or to rely on built-in Linux security practices 
such as careful privilege management, secure software repositories, frequent updates, firewalls, and network protections. For users in corporate environments or regulated industries, the trust question becomes even more complex. Enterprise security policies may explicitly forbid the use of software with perceived geopolitical risk, or they may require thorough vetting and certification processes before deployment. In those contexts, the decision to deploy Kaspersky's Linux antivirus would have to be made in consultation with legal, compliance, and security teams who understand the specific regulatory landscape and risk profile of the organization. For everyday individual users, the choice may come down to personal comfort and risk tolerance. If you are someone who treats your data privacy as paramount and prefers open source tools that you can inspect or that follow community governance, you might choose to wait for more community trusted options or stick with established open source scanners. If you're more concerned about practical protection and you trust Kaspersky's track record enough to balance privacy considerations, then using their Linux solution, ideally, with a close look at the privacy policy and settings, might be a reasonable choice. In closing, it's clear that Kaspersky's arrival on the Linux desktop is a noteworthy moment in the evolution of desktop security. It signals a shift in how antivirus solutions think about Linux, acknowledges that threats are real across operating systems, and gives users more options. But trust will always be more than a checkbox. Trust involves understanding history, context, technical implementation, privacy implications, community values, and your own priorities as a user. Whether you embrace Kaspersky's offering, approach it with caution, or seek alternatives, the most important thing is to make an informed choice that aligns with your security goals and your comfort with the associated risks.